So here we are in my kitchen, and you'll notice I have a non-protected, non-GFCI outlet right next to my kitchen sink. Now, why is this a problem? If you have, let's say, I don't know, a hand mixer, and it's plugged in, and you drop it in a sink full of water, what are you going to do? This thing's not going to protect you. It is properly wired and properly grounded, but of course, most of your hand appliances do not have a third ground prong anyway, but we'll get to why that doesn't matter in a moment. What matters is having GFCI protection. Notice if I push the button to test it, it's not going to click. Again, that's not a 100% indicator, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Just because you see this doesn't mean it's not protected. Sometimes it can be piggybacked off of another GFCI down the road. That is what these load terminals on the top side are for. So you can put your power here and run a regular outlet off of the top, and it will also be GFI protected. But you can see in this case, this is going right from the breaker panel to right here, and nothing is going to trip that. Welcome or welcome back to Justin Nelson's Projects. If you're new here, I cover automotive, 3D printing, electronics, you name it. Subscribe for more fun, and now, back to the video. So I purchased not one, but two really dirt cheap Amazon special hand mixers. But why two? Because I'm going to do something a little crazy. Again, not to be done at home. I am a professional, that's why I'm wearing this. That also means I had 18 bucks and went to Home Depot. No, I do actually do electrical for a living, and I just thought I'd wear this for fun. Okay, it came with a bunch of, well, that's rather neat. It's got a little uh, measuring thing. Yeah, kind of hate to destroy these. So we've got our mixer. Yeah, let's put the beaters on. Never put these on while it's plugged in. Let's give it a quick test. Ah, oh, safety first. They even zip tied the plug. Okay, well, there's that. And we'll give it a quick little test. Make sure it works. So let's get to the actual test. Okay, so I've got my hand mixer. I've got a fire extinguisher ready, just in case. And I'm going to drop this on number three. I'm going to drop it right in there. And I've got the breaker ready to trip. I already know it's breaker number one. Already tested that. And here we go. Test number one. Speed three. We're just going to drop it in. Now that is extremely unsafe. You don't want to touch the sink. You don't want to touch the outlet. But it's just sitting there running. I'm kind of surprised. I was expecting something a little more catastrophic. But if you were to touch that right now, you would probably get the ever-loving crap zapped out of you. I'm standing back. And I'll tell you what. You can hear it buzzing pretty good. I was really hoping for a little more damage. It's sucking the water right in and blowing it right back out. I was really expecting a lot more damage here. What gives? I just realized that might help the light situation here. Oh, and it finally tripped the actual circuit breaker, not a GFI. My my overhead light went off. This light here, I intentionally plugged into an outlet on the other side of the kitchen. But yeah, that actually drew enough current to, yeah, it's a little warm, but it drew enough current eventually to actually trip a 15 amp circuit breaker. But since the power is off, and we'll just verify that. Good, I don't have to run down there and shut that off. I'm gonna switch this out. I'm gonna use this almond off-white outlet specifically because it has a red LED when it's tripped, a green LED when it has power. And yes, this is not a proper electrician screwdriver. I know that, but we're not working on a live circuit. Now you'll note that there is no actual ground wire. This is perfectly up to code and they just ground through the conduit. So those screws 
that we're holding it into the conduit are what provide the ground. And we can prove that by simply wiring up a GFI outlet. Now when you're changing these, when you switch from a non-GFI to a GFI, you may find that it's a pretty tight fit in the box and if you have metal boxes like this, and that is where this practice comes in. Put a little tape over these screws and that is just to make sure it can't come into contact with that box. So we're going to do that on this and for one other reason because we're going to operate this while not screwed in to do a quick little demo. Okay, so it's not screwed in just yet to the actual thing. So it's actually not grounded, but I want to demonstrate something with that. So first, let me go turn the breaker back on. So you'll notice the green light is on, whether it's grounded or not. I actually thought that would only light up if it were properly grounded. But here's the thing, not grounded. If I plug in my little tester, it shows open ground. If I ground it, then it shows that it is properly grounded. I hope you can see that. But if I press the test button, look, red, no test. But if it's grounded, then it will trip the outlet. But here's the thing, even ungrounded, let's say you put this in a really old house and there is no ground. This tester, what the uh, inspector is gonna use is not gonna trip it. But you know what will trip it is an actual ground fault. If I take this on the neutral side and just dip it in that water. Yeah, there we go, it trips without a ground. The reason for that is there's an imbalance between current flow on the neutral versus on the hot side. Just like that, you're protected whether this is grounded or not. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise, not even an inspector. So let me go ahead and button this all up and we'll do test number two with another mixer. Okay, so we just demonstrated that you can, in fact, trip a GFCI outlet even with no ground connection to the outlet itself. Now, how exactly is that working? Well, the way a GFCI outlet works is pretty simple in nature. It's very complex when you get down to the nitty gritty, but the basics are very simple. So you've got an outlet here. You've got your hot or live wire, and you've got your neutral, which is also referred to as the return path. Some people call that ground, but... We're just gonna call it our return path. So you've got current flowing and current flowing back. We're not worrying about what direction the electrons are flowing or any of that. We're going with conventional current flow. So our current flows through here into your appliance and back through the return path. No big deal. GFCI outlet. This is a transformer. So you've got your current flowing in and it goes through one of the coils of the transformer through your electrical load. And let's say this is a toaster with a metal housing on it. And that metal housing is grounded through the ground terminal in this case. But the current path is through the hot, through the resistive load, and then back through our return path. So the same amount of current that's coming through this coil is going through this coil. And those two cancel each other out which means no electromagnetic field is created on this iron core. Let's say there's an imbalance in that current. What's gonna happen is this little coil here will sense that and our pretend little amp meter here will pick up on that and trip the GFCI and break the circuit. And it does break both legs just to be extra safe. Now, what can cause that to happen? Well, quite simply, Let's say your toaster shorts out. One of the heating elements touches the outside casing. So you've got current flowing in. Some of it's going through the resistive load and returning through here, but some of that current is flowing back a different path. So the amount of current flowing through this coil is greater than the amount of current flowing back through on the return path, and therefore a current is induced here. This guy registers it, cuts the power. Okay, let's say we have an ungrounded appliance, maybe one that only has two prongs maybe it's plastic maybe it's a hand mixer okay let's say either of these wires it really doesn't matter because there is going to be a potential difference between this and our earth ground even though they're bonded at the panel at the service entrance that's beyond the scope of this video there is going to be a slight potential difference obviously enough to trip a gfci but let's say that you're holding that mixer and your hands are wet the whole thing is soaking wet you're touching the floor Okay, so whether it's the neutral or the hot, it touches your hand, it's going to the floor. 
So some of that current that's flowing in through the hot is getting returned instead of through here. Some of it, it only takes a tiny little bit. Some of it is flowing through you and through the floor, inducing a magnetic field, inducing a current here, tripping the GFCI. The same thing if the hot leg, it doesn't matter, any imbalance in this whole system. You introduce just the slightest difference between these two, that device will save you. And they've improved greatly over the years. People used to hate GFCI because of nuisance trips. They used to trip for no reason. Uh, sometimes a power glitch could cause them to trip. They've improved so much over the years. If you have older ones that are acting up, replace them. Test them too. But my main point is the ground connection on the outlet itself is just to provide a ground pin, just like a regular outlet with three prongs. It doesn't serve any function of how the GFCI itself works. But what it will do is cause their stupid little tester to not trip the outlet because all their tests is doing is taking a resistor from the neutral to the ground pin. But if that ground pin isn't connected to anything, no current flows, and their little tester is gonna do what you saw me do upstairs at the kitchen. But that same setup, when you take a wire from the neutral and you touch it to an actual path to ground, such as a sink full of water, it will trip and it will save your life. That ground connection on the outlet is not required. The only thing that the code requires is that you put a sticker on it that says no equipment ground. That's pretty much it. I've had this argument with inspectors in the past where I've done a remodel on an older house where there just was not a ground wire to use. Put a GFCI outlet in there, 100% code compliant, but his little tester wouldn't trip because there's no ground connection, no equipment ground. It had the sticker and I tried to explain to him, if you had an actual ground fault, like what we demonstrated upstairs earlier, it will trip. It will save lives. It do, it'll do its job. That ground connection is just a convenience. So you've got a three prong outlet as part of the GFCI. It does not serve any extra function to make the GFCI do what it's supposed to do. Now, with that said, let's give it a try in the real world with another mixer. Okay, so we're gonna take our new mixer here, the one we haven't destroyed yet. And this time, yeah, we're gonna skip the whole uh, putting the beaters on. We're gonna cut our little zip tie off of the plug and it doesn't really matter if it's powered on or not but we'll turn it on anyway so same water now there's a reason i didn't put the plate on there yet i'm going to turn that on doesn't matter what speed because immediately it was rendered safe Now, is that safe to plug in at this point? No, absolutely not. Is that gonna stop me? I think you have your answer. Because I wanna do one more demonstration. I'm gonna reset the outlet. I wanna show you that even if this is not grounded, so we're gonna pull the outlet completely out of the box. There are only two wires connected the hot and the neutral. It is not at all grounded. This is the biggest misconception, is that it has to have a ground wire. As you can see, there is no ground wire. I'm gonna plug that back in. I forgot it was still on. And it just made a fun little hiss noise there. Okay, I'm going to nudge it into the water. And watch this, no ground immediately trip the GFCI outlet anyway. But in this condition, the little tester that your electrical inspector is probably gonna use is gonna do nothing unless the outlet is actually grounded. I think this might be a keeper. Only one way to find out. I'd say we got a keeper. And if it does short out or anything like that, this guy will protect me. If you like this kind of crap, make sure to hit subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.